All right, I think we're good. Kind of. I can't get this seat to work perfectly. I guess it's a little. Ah. Don't worry about my car toys, my car wheels, car toy wheels or whatever. That's for another toy. <laughs> kind of a dirty countertop. Pretty dirty. I'm going to try and get this clean today. I do not actually have the camera set up. I'm using my cell phone, so it's... uh is what it is. I'll turn the slide over this way so that it's uh, not too blinding for the most part. Hopefully audio is good, but uh, you know. trying to do, hopefully if audio is picking up, is um, take apart take apart the Kimber 19 Lone Desert Warrior. I've had this uh, about two and a half years, I guess. And pretty high spring tension. This is with the hammer back, and it's probably about 20 pounds right there. Um, not easy always to pull back, but um, let me just state that there is uh, room for a rail. Um, I'm gonna actually run a sound check with my laptop just to make sure that. Uh, we can hear me one sec. Sound check. Okay, uh, the sound is not perfect, but I can hear myself a little low. But then again, my phone is, uh, I guess the microphone portion is behind the television with, I pretty much just, uh, used a box of shotgun shells to hold the phone in place and it's sitting on top of my I think it's like a 37 inch television but uh, let's get started this is my Kimber Desert Warrior uh, 45 caliber ACP and I bought this new box I think that there we go hold the note uh, I bought this new box uh, 2016 I believe after working several Weeks of overtime, it's probably about uh, 1285 pre tax, I think, or 1285 post tax. Um, come down in price about 100 bucks. Um, I flew it about 250 rounds through it. I intend to do more, it's just, uh, I guess, being motivated enough to put up with uh, the morons at the range. And I just don't, I'm not speaking about anybody in particular, but you know, you do run into quite a few personalities. And, you know, basically, you're kind of spending a lot of money to go out and do it. Uh, notice I do have the Surefire X300. Uh, white, and I believe the battery is finally going to my... I'm running the filter on it. <laughs> I think the battery is finally dead. I've only used the tech light maybe... Uh, so many hours 
but no, the, I think the battery is dying regardless. So I'm, I'm looking at feedback on the actual video, and it's a little low. It's probably about time to change it out. Um, the light does run off at two, and I do recommend sticking with Surefire brand. I've tried running a Streamlight brand light uh, batteries through some of the Surefire lights, and not only do they not last as long, the output is nowhere near as comparable, and I'd uh, pretty much say vice versa. You do not run Surefire brand uh, batteries through a Streamlight. Uh, you do not get the same type of performance. This is the A model. I do actually have a B model too, and it's, uh, I believe there is a, uh, this, right here, this is actually a Picatinny rail, rail adapter. Just press down the tabs and slide it on, and it locks on with the uh, B version. Uh, you'll actually be using uh, a small tension wheel to uh, tighten it down. Either one's fine. I mean, it's not like uh, there's any greater advantage with either one. But uh, this light is handy. Um, normally, I have it on something else, but you know, flat dark earth, it looks respectable on here. I've seen people in the black. X3 and it looks kind of silly. So, um, I believe this is 5 inch barrel, 1911. Uh, the weight on it is about 3.5 pounds. Standard sights. Uh, they are night vision sights, of course, though, but uh, pretty much standard. One second. The sandwich that is interrupted me because in any event, anytime you're doing something, there's always somebody to interfere with your daily routine. Now I need to go back to adjusting my tone to where I can pick myself up with the microphone. <clears throat> in any event, um, Say standard sights, night sights, uh, tritium insert, uh, skeleton hammer. See right here where my thumb is at. Uh, as far as range play on this, I think the biggest issue I've had is non glove wearing. I'm still somehow, without locking it down all the way, um, I've somehow managed to put a little bit of play into this safety where um, I go to pull the trigger and it's not activated uh, there's an actual gap it's not all the way up but uh, safety is in place um, it's literally about two millimeters and the safety is active so um, that's one thing that I've noticed that that is kind of um, I'm not really sure to, to describe it if it's benefit or if it's not because uh, you know a lot of people talk about situations where if your gun doesn't fire but uh, the biggest issue is uh, with the getting pushed up, uh, you know, me needing to double check. And I've always, you know, pressed the safety all the way up and back down to uh, resume firing. But uh, now I see that, uh, you know, it is possible to uh, engage the safety without the uh, safety mechanism all the way up. Um, I think the 
it's my only uh, quib with uh, this. This is actually my second 1911. Uh, originally owned a Springfield 1911 A1. Um, flawless in terms of just ball uh, plinking and ball shooting. It was not necessarily, I wouldn't recommend it for carry, just a big piece of steel. But um, this one I have used for open carry. Um, I did actually pick up a Kimber brand holster that was uh, going to allow the X300 light. Um, it doesn't allow for the limbs cover, but um, I'm trying to remember the name of the other company that actually makes custom holsters. It's uh, OTG Hex, I believe. Let me look it up real quick. Yes, that is correct. And it's called Off the Grid Concepts. They actually will uh, make custom holsters for you, and that includes with the light. I believe they even possibly may do with the X400. Uh, they make custom mag holsters, even Zippo, and they've even got uh, a novelty holster, which I will not uh, completely mention at this time. But, um, well, basically, it's. Uh, pretty funny it's actually a uh, a Trojan holster you know I, I know a lot of people will say well this company's not that serious but you know if you've got the equipment I've seen other companies make similar funny things uh, a COCK holster uh, basically for uh, no actually it's a it's actually a plush and the, you know you find a drunk person you take a picture with a plush right next to them it's pretty funny um, of course they're passed out I think but it's just novelty but in any event they do make holsters for uh, most weapons and knife uh, knife edge knife edge weapons it's a pretty awesome sight uh, a little pricey for most people but I would definitely recommend spending the extra money to have something that's a little bit more appropriate for uh, I guess just range training or you know just possible tactical uh, tactical carry for training purposes um, in terms of retention, I believe it's just a general sling, so you have to be pretty good with retaining your weapon. Uh, if you're a minimalist and just love to run, you know, like they, I guess they call them the taco pouch, you can do that too. Um, pretty great setup, pretty great site. Uh, recommend checking out the company. In any event, um, other than that, the safety um, with this holster too, I've noticed a little bit of wear. Um, I believe I, you know, there's a little bit from activating the uh, safety right here on the uh, beaver tail. Uh, it's real minimal, it's probably about two millimeters in width. And I guess, of course, with me shooting this a little bit more left handed, I think that uh, it's on this side more than it is the other. Uh, I think there's a little bit on the front serrations. And, you know, all this is from the uh, actual holster. They do recommend that you use a silicone spray on the inside to um, get some of that matted or treated leather to be a little bit less abrasive on your gun finish. <laughs> I've seen some that are just terrible. I mean, I think I've seen it like all along, right, you know, right along the slide that uh, either just from continual drawing and undrawing or just improperly treatment of the holster. but. Um, I do not have the actual pressure pad activation simply finger, which, you know, I'm not worried about. It's an extra hundred bucks, but, um, in terms of disassembly, this weapon is not, uh, super difficult. I've seen some people showboat whenever they do it. Uh, they'll actually knock out this, uh, slide retention pin and just remove the entire, uh, slide assembly. That's going to include the uh, the bushing and the uh, guide rod and the spring. So it's going to be under a lot of tension. And uh, if you're not familiar with doing that, I would uh, recommend not doing it. Um, just to you know have a good habit of, of properly disassembling this. You know according to the actual uh, manufacturer's uh, guide.
I mean, I, I can show you how to do it later if we get time, but, um, you know, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, firearm does come with a case, and uh, this is the assembly tool, which will save your thumb. Just trust me, that is a heavy spring. It's not like the 12-pound uh, spring in a Beretta. This is, uh, I don't know if it's 25, but it's, it's pretty big. Uh, regular features, just uh, have some serrations or checkering over here in the back. I really haven't had any issues firing this and uh, anything running into my hand. Um, also do have a lanyard. I mean, it has a lanyard loop. And this is pretty great. I mean, I, when I was open carrying, I would, uh, you know, attach this in the event of, I mean, it's always, you'll never know what's going to happen, but just to address the unforeseen, you know, run it through, attach to your belt, and, you know, technically, it's, I guess, if you're injured and somebody has to drag you and you can't hold your weapon, it's going to get scuffed up, but, you know, it doesn't end up on the ground for anybody to pick up. It's still kind of with you. Uh, the, I guess the tension on this cord is respectable. I mean, it's just going to be pulling about eight pounds just to get it to mm, full extension if you're going to be firing. I mean, it's uh, negligible for the most part, assuming you have some uh, muscle capacity. Um, trigger standard trigger is. A 1911 trigger. You're not going to get any play. It's not going to jerk. It's just straight back. Yeah. So, love it. Um, what can I say other than that? I mean, uh, skeleton hammer. Beaver tail is pretty sweet. Haven't had any uh, issues finding great grip. Uh, Magwell is somewhat beveled. I mean, it's not perfect, but. I also have a uh, 10 round mag right here. I didn't even have 10 rounds in there, but um, it's pretty quick in terms of uh, getting the mag in there. Let me just unload these just for the sake of safety. Somebody would say, You probably already should have done that. Well, they haven't even been fed into the actual fire, so you know, you can glue some drive through. I don't really care. Um, fit straight in there. Uh, I bought these separate from the actual firearm. The firearm just come with one uh, 1911 mag. Of course, it came with brand. These are Wilson Combat. Uh, pretty sweet. And feeding. It's pretty flawless. Oops. And I'm standing there holding it up, even right handed. It's empty, it's gonna lock back. And, then, and if I can get my thumb over there, I don't know, it's kinda of locked right now. It's kinda of weird. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, it's kinda of weird, it's stuck. No, it's stuck. I guess oh right, right, right. Um since there's not a round in there, um you actually do need to pull the second back and then press the slide release down. Kind of a pain in the ass, but whatever, it works. Um, it's not like the Beretta. Even with an empty mag, you can actually get slide. Um, it's a pretty sturdy firearm. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. I think that's just the one thing you need to pay, pay uh, mind to if you are operating this. That uh, uh, you will need a full mag to be able to activate slide release. But for the most part, I mean, it's not like uh, a WC where there's, you know, the wide and feed ramp that uh, makes it pretty fall as you're seeing this. But for the most part, you can get mags in there pretty quick. So. Uh, what else? What else? What else? That's that. Um, let's go ahead and try to take it apart. Where's that tool I had? Um, front end right here, there is uh, a 
bushing, but in order to get this, I believe it is clockwise, you turn it, but you need to keep your thumb over this uh, little button right here because it actually has the guide rod and the spring. And just pressing it down like that, it feels like a uh, 22 round Glock 40 caliber mag near capacity. I mean, it's pretty, pretty stout. So uh, just be careful, just uh, put your thumb over this. It's gonna fit right over it. I call it braid, but slide it over to the left a little bit and keep pressure down on this the whole time uh, just because once you open this up, you know, this could slide over. So it's gonna basically be a small little tab that still sits over this uh, guide rod, but it's only by a small margin. So once you slide it over completely clockwise, keeping good pressure, um, you're gonna notice that the actual cap for the, for the guide spring is gonna hold that, but notice how that's not coming out, and it's uh, going to require just a little bit of care when you're pulling it out. Um, now that we've taken the uh, pressure off of that, go ahead and slide the uh, bushing back over. Go to the actual slide release pin. Uh, in order to activate this, this actually needs to be pulled back, and that is the slide. Uh, there's a larger indention right here above the actual end Kimber, but there's also a smaller one. Just prior to that, prior to having the slide back all the way, uh, I believe you only need to do that to that point. Nope, actually it's going to be all the way to the slide release. Um, and, uh, well, let's see if we can get this bad boy to come back. It's, uh, even without the spring in there, it's still a pretty, it's a very, it's, the slide is, it's not like a Glock slide, I can tell you that. It's, uh, it sits on there. It's pretty. It's it's made to run cleanly and precisely and keep dust out. And it's not, uh, you know, it's not like I'm standing like a like a clock to where, uh, you know, you have you would feel almost a little bit of play or it's pretty. You know, just slide it back on top. It's uh, pain in the rear. But uh, let me try this again. Wow. Could have almost sworn it's to this first tab. Maybe, maybe I'm just not very good at taking this apart. Now you know why these sit in my. They sit with just COP on. Um, I don't know why. Oh wait, wait, wait. Um, let's just uh, try and take this bushing off all the way and see if that's going to help. Any day now, slide. Be some section right here where it will release. I, it's being grumpy. I should refer to the manual. <laughs> uh, I'll get it. I'll get it. I swear. Oh, well, that might be the other issue, too. No, it's actually going to cock back the hammer, regardless. says Kimber and nope doesn't work out all right well if it's gonna be grumpy we're gonna have to do this the other way I'm just gonna feed this back in here and always make sure your firearm is unloaded gonna put that back on there and I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna lock this back. Okay, I've got it uh, to where this actual slot, this second indication, where this first smaller indication is. And I've got the, um, oops, I've got this to come out. So let's go ahead and try and get that forward and I'll try and pull this out. Hopefully I don't put my eye out. <laughs> Alright, I got it.
got this out now. It's on the slide, it's the uh, slide release. Now again, this is still under pressure, so you need to uh, keep your hand on the bottom so that spring doesn't come fling out at your eye because it will, it will put your eye out just like it came out right there. That was the uh, guide rod. So like I said, you gotta be extremely careful. I mean, that's with heavy grip pressure and this thing is still flying out and around. So. I think I just misplaced that cap with that sliding out like that. I'll find it. I've got a tack light. We can we can go tactical to locate it. Um oh actually no it's still in there. There it is. Come right now. So sit in there. Um you need to actually make sure that this bushing is put to where you can pull the entire set out. I believe you turn it the other way. You turn it counterclockwise and then you can just pull the barrel out of the front. And I'm trying to relate this video as this. this is looking left to right and over, so it's technically slightly reversed. Uh, barrel bushing. Uh, I've shot mainly ball ammo through this and have had zero issues. Um, I need to get something to actually clean this line, so give me a sec. I need to go turn the water down that I'm running, so give me a couple minutes. I think I'm finally back. Let's do this. Gotta keep the grass from burning, dying out. Uh, we'll revert back to Q-tips. And I showed this in like my last video just to... Uh, you wanna run it just anywhere that you think that something's gonna come into contact with something else because that's obviously where the uh, build-up's gonna be. I've run it along the uh, slide guides, and I mean this thing is not as it's not as prone to get as dirty as a Glock because it's it's not polymer, it's not as loose like I was stating with the slide, so it's you know it's pretty quick. Uh, I should eventually become more familiar with this and just have it fully taken apart, but you know it's.
it's not going to help the fun. It's not going to help the farm function any better. It's just going to be cleaner. It does what it's meant to do. <laughs> uh, this is a polished feed port, which is incredible. I love it. Um, I can feel it right now. I haven't cleaned this thing in two or three months at least, and it's still just. Awesome. Can't see it. Let me double check on the video right here. If I pull it over this way, nope, it needs to be closer and over. Well, I can't really see too great with the light, but um, in any event. Um, in terms of 1911s compared to polymer guns, you do need to exercise caution when cleaning or reassembling. Um, it's usually it's pretty easy to scratch firearm. Um, you gotta be careful. I have uh, what they refer to as an idiot mark right here, wherever you feed back in the uh, slide retention pin. It's a little nick. Oh, it's not even a nick. It's just rubbed against the uh, paint a little bit. Just gotta be careful. Um, I know a lot of people just love to collect and clean, so um, I guess if you're using exercise and caution, you can avoid this 90% of the time. Uh, your hands aren't always gonna be uh, as exterior as you want, so um, just make sure you pick a good day to do it. Um, I think in terms of just general lubrication, I'm not too heavy with lubricant on this. Um, it just reminds me of, a, you know, any type of AR that you have. Um, you put too much lube on there, especially around the barrel, it's gonna keep back in your face and it's gonna be under pressure. It will not feel good. It feels like a uh, steroid injected frog is spitting on you or something. Uh, finer lubricant and CLP. I have copper remover, uh, which I showed last time. Uh, it's a bullet cleaner too. Since I haven't, uh, although I haven't fired it, um, probably wouldn't hurt to go ahead and give a little bit of tender love to this thing, uh, the barrel at least, and uh, give it a little bit of an extra scrub. And I also have a uh, work cleaning snake. I have one for the 40 and I also have one for the 45. Um, I actually know that uh, the first one I used is for the 9, but I ran it through the 40 as well. Because I believe the 9mm is uh, an abbreviated 38, but either way, it's, it's not going to get stuck in there. Um, see how we do this first thing is I think I might I mean I actually have a guide rod too I actually uh, you you also want to have like a board cleaning brush that's attached to uh, just a general plastic guide rod and then an actual metal rod that I actually just run over this spike it on there. Um, this works wonders. You'd be amazed that uh, you know you run a couple of these swaths through first through and it's supposed to be the heavier solvent and you run the snake then you run the board brush and then you run a couple more of these through and you find you still have some residue buildup. So it's, it's you want to be pretty thorough. You don't want to uh, neglect carrying for your firearm. I just uh, ran this through. You can see a little bit of gunk. Um, it's gonna flip it upside down, just for the sake of uh, efficiency. You don't want to use too many of these. Be a litter bug, but no, uh, it's seriously more just to save time. And these are uh, pretty utility. Um, what I also do, and just be careful pulling this out. You want to nick the inside of your barrel. Um, with the outside. I'll just uh, flip these both in, and now I have the underside. 
Get it back through. Still got a little bit of gunk on there. Not too much. You can't even really see it. And on this end, this one was so dirty it kind of ran through, but let's go ahead and use that side. And that should be good for that at least. Uh, that's the uh, copper remover. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, give this a little bit of uh, board cleaner love. A little aerosol. I've done this so much that I've gotten used to the, the funk, but just don't spray so much that you get high off this stuff. You just need a little, little spritz. Take the bull brush and run it through. This is more of a cleaning procedure. I'm not picking anything up off of this. I can tell you it's pretty clean. And this, yeah. Just run through. And whenever I was breaking this in, I was doing this. I was taking it apart and cleaning it every 50 rounds for the first 250. Uh, you want to be pretty gentle with this because um, if you just try to feed hollow points through it, I can guarantee you that eventually you're going to run into some sort of uh, reliability or functionality issue. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to uh, not fire, but it's probably not going to perform how you like. A lot of people say, well, just feed it ammo and it'll run. But, uh, you do want to become used to each new weapon that you purchase and it's uh, you know response when actioned um, each, each firearm is different they may all be the same caliber you know if you have glocks that are all nine millimeter I mean you still want to um, you know be pretty gentle breaking your name I'm just gonna run this in here real quick this uh, guide rod with the cleaning swap real quick see if there's anything coming out no um, do a visual inspection of the barrel, see if you see anything. If not, that's generally for the most part pretty good. Um, here's one little cheat that you can use just to kind of avoid any sort of late night nightmares. Did I clean it up? Just take a little bit of CLP, put it on a uh, Q-tip, and just sort of run it right around this area where. Uh, you know, I guess you're gonna have a lot of primer, uh, primer activation. So, and you know, of course, it's pretty much the area where you know uh, that bullet is first gonna launch is where it's repelled. So, just give it a little bit of extra love. I mean, I run CLP and I've still got gunk on here. So, like I said, it, it, it's never gonna be 100% clean, but um, you can do what you can to uh, just ensure that this thing is gonna function as it should. Since I do have residue and I don't want to start spraying aerosols and breathing in fumes, I'm going to go ahead and use this little cleaning cloth just to clean, such as this um, slide retention pin. I can also use this for the uh, little guide rod. It's metal, can't complain. It's not a Beretta polymer, it's a plastic guide rod. So. Uh, I cleaned the bushing, cleaned that uh, spring cap, or cleaned the spring clap cap and now the bushing and even though it's a little funky a little dirty I just like to go ahead and use some of this just to kind of give it a little love nudge I guess and then I'll take the q-tip and run it through here again see what we missed because I ran a couple q-tips over this and the second one wasn't so bad, it wasn't picking anything up, and I've got more gunk in there. So, I mean, there's always going to be some deposit. You just don't want to go heavy on, you know, these solvents. You don't want to waste them. And also, um, you know, you just don't want to splash some on here like it's cologne. And then uh, need to come back, or you come back and, like I'm saying, you come back and clean it, and you still got stuff on there. So, um, you yeah. know. It's, it's all about recycling. Just kind of, you know, use a little bit of what's on there and go from there. Um, I'm going to use this other cloth right here for this spring. And I'm actually just going to put lubricating oil on this just to keep it nice and fresh. Uh, you want to put the cap over here on this open end of the spring. Uh, 
I believe, let me just double check, I, I'll check the manual, but I'm pretty sure that that's the reason for the cap too, is because this is not closed, it's not closed in spring, so, one sec. full size. Let me check, let me check, let me check. Uh, there's a picture of it, but it's not too clear in terms of what side of the spring it's supposed to sit on. I think I've seen videos to where you just want to put the cap on that end that, that's open that it's not, uh, you know, section off. That's pretty much my preference, but in any event, uh, this thing is it's pretty utility. I mean, it's just a good reference point. I read through it about three or four times um, before I actually decided to try and take this apart. And, um, you know, I, I did watch videos too just to make sure that uh, I was doing it right because you don't want to lose parts taking this apart at the range. You know, you have a cap shootout down the range. You're not going to get it back. They're not going to stop people paying money that then I have stop the entire firing line to go and get this. You might find a range safety officer officer nice enough to actually go out and do this, but I'm pretty sure you have to uh, catch his eye if you know what I mean. So you know, wear your Daisy Dukes. Um here's another way to do this, use this guide this metal guide rod and just gently rub it in there. You don't have to go hardcore because again you don't want to scratch the inside. I mean, you can um, actually use the Allen wrench to take off the grip covers and clean this. I don't have that kind of time or patience, but you also want to get grime that's along the uh, actual grip section because it does get in there. It sits in there, and uh, you just don't want you just want to have a clean firearm. So in any event, um, it's pretty quick. I mean, it's not uber crazy. Um, I love this needle pin on this lubricating section. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy with this. I believe this is the actual safety for the uh, the block for the pin. should look at that book, but I'm um, just putting a little drop right there. Um, we got a little bit of an area right here where the safety does run. Um, I'm just going to do it on this left side. See it splashing around, you know, either you put too much or it's in the wrong spot. So I'm just kind of doing this visually, I'm not trying to get super technical with this. I don't want to be known for just being a jackass or being the know it all about a 1911, but um, put another little drop right there. So I need that. That's that. Um, everything's kind of been washed, or I mean, not necessarily washed, but uh, wiped down. Put the cat back on its floor cleaner. We do not need it anymore. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that back up. In terms of selection for cleaners, it doesn't really matter what you use. I think there's like a frog, or I typically tend to use hops. Um, initially, when I first started, I did I guess that oh, it's close. I think I did have a preference for CLP, but uh, CLP is more of a field chemical just to kind of keep you running and going, running and going. But um, I recommend using it if you know as a sort of a last step, not necessarily uh, as a go-to for everything because it. If it does everything all at once, chances are it only has properties um, that you know you generally look for, but it, it's going to be it's going to be in a chemical composition to where um, each one can be present without overriding the other, as opposed to one that's strictly meant for you know cleaning copper out of a 
I'm moving comp out of the board. And my dogs are gone. Sorry about that. We got three of them in there. Roll, 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 roll. Go nuts. Anything moves. They think they smell something. They go off. And it's, I don't even have the front porch light on. In any event, um, okay, so that's clean. Let's go ahead and try and put this back together. Um, let's just get anything you don't need out of the way to eliminate distractions. Most people think, oh, I can just do it like that, but, um, you'll eventually just end up always having those distractions. I'm going to keep CLP out and everything else to put up. And CLP, like I said, you want to use it sort of like as, as a last cleaning touch up. Sort of like um, like a scratch and dent type application. Just sort of, you know, once you wax your car four times over just to make sure because, you know, you don't like washing it. And trust me, I used to wax my car four or five, or my truck four or five times over. And even after three rainstorms, it was still looking clean, so I kind of know what I'm talking about sometimes, every now and then. But, um, you know, just run this over wherever you got it. Um, you could put a little bit more on the other end. I, I hate being so liberal because I'm not a liberal. Um, you typically want to be pretty conservative again about um, overuse of chemicals just mainly because you know it's pain in the ass to pain in the rear end to go to this you know drive 20 minutes to pick up an eight dollar bottle chances are you might end up wa wasting your money on fast food drive through on the way back I mean I don't but so I'm just going to use one of these cleaning swaths or cleaning tabs again and I'm going to uh, wipe this down and it's got a nice little sheen to it um, let's reassemble this the way that normally it's taken apart um, just to avoid any issues I believe it is you feed get them on the barrel oh wait it's always reversed sorry this isn't like a standard weapon and there's a little tab right here you just want to make sure this lines up whenever you're uh, this is actually it's gonna sit on the other side but this is that tab so you're gonna have to make it towards visible and it'll sit and retain uh, put the bushing back on top uh, I believe you want to keep this to where it's facing the left and the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and push the in there, load it slightly, and actually, no, I, I'm gonna need that lubricating oil again. Um, the way that this guide rod goes is face down with a little two arms, oops, little two nubbies down. Let's put this right way right. along the barrel, and it doesn't sit flush like a Beretta. You actually need to uh, feed this to the spring. So that's pretty good and the next thing you can do is you can put this cap on and you can actually do this last if you're not you know, because my hands do have cleaning component on them so it's going to be sliding around so what you can do is just actually make sure that this is flat to where you have this little pin right here also sitting flat and slide it over and you pull the slide back so far to where you can actually see that, that tab. Oops, got the safety on, but slide the barrel back and activated the safety again. I told you it's a super, super sensitive safety, but just go ahead and lock that in there. You don't actually uh, place it back to where it's ready to action again. You just want to make sure that, you know, if I didn't have this pin in here, the barrel would slide out, and I'll show you. If I don't have that in there right, the barrel will slide out. So it's all about ensuring that middle tab is going to sit to where you can lock this down with the slide retaining pin. And you do need to like 
basically have this. It's usually easier if you go ahead and line it up before you feed it in there and just be real gentle feed it in there. You can do it side by side and just be really intentfully and forcefully gentle just to where it's ready to go back in there. And that's a bushing that's not the barrel, but um, but it's locked in there. We're good. So got that in there. I believe we're gonna just turn this now to the right and we're gonna feed the spring in there. Guide rod first. Whoa, oh, nope, wait, wait, wait. Let's do this again. Pull the pin out. I have to do the guide rod first. See this these cameras are such pains in the mirror, I tell you what, this is only gonna feed with the uh, with the two little nubbies running along the uh, barrel. It's gonna be facing up whenever you do it like this, but uh, when I show the visual reference it was facing down. So um, let's go ahead and get that slide pin, that retaining pin back in there. And I believe I see that. Just to double check. Pan around, but once you get in there, once you get this up to the range, it's uh, it's a beautiful little piece of uh, equipment. So got the little the little end that will catch on your clothes if you're not careful. Um, you know, again, make sure your firearm is not loaded because uh, be an idiot. Oh God! I'm an idiot. As I'm saying that, I'm like, oh, don't do that. I don't know why I was distracted, but I'm watching it as it's in the air. It's just by jump up and try and catch it. This goes flying. The headset comes ripped out of the laptop and the lamp. But in any event, um, I try to switch fingers whenever I was doing it. So to just, you want to pick either your thumb or your index, or use both preferably, and just dedicate that hand and those fingers to. Um, Gently sliding and feeding this back in there and making sure that you can lock it down. You can use a tool or you can just use your thumb, press this down to press the barrel bushing back over your hill and audible click, it locks down. And just make sure that, you know, make sure that you're good and ready to go. Now I still have the issue for this slide retaining pin. You gotta be extremely precautious because again, this slide can still go flying out, you can still get hit with either the spring or, you know, it, it, it will blind you. So you just gotta be extremely careful. Um, I wouldn't recommend using your, your thumb to slowly, gently pull this out. I would, I would run it along the other end, and that's how I got the edit scratch, but to where it's almost contacting the part of the inside of the frame, but I'm doing that for the reason that I'm feeding this back into this other section, but This is kind of the pain part. Um, oh, slide, uh, safe is activated. But once you pull it back again to that first little tab prior to the Kimber, it'll just drop right in there. And, you know, if you do this five or 10 times when you're out on the range, it takes literally three or four minutes and you can take it apart. Just do a real quick CLP. Uh, Call it the acid bath, but just do a real quick CLP clean out and load up another box. I still have another 500 rounds to fit, you know, feed through this before I'm gonna start running hollow points. Um, so with that, I put it at 750, then I'll uh, get 250 rounds of hollow point and it should be broken in. Um, again, this is not a Wilson combat, it's just ready out of the box for hollows. So, $1,200 uh, mid level 45 mid. Entry level 45 ACP. You know, it's there are other brands out there that start at about $2,300. Um, I've actually held a Wilson Combat and it literally weighed as much. I think it actually weighed about the same with a full 10 round mag as a Glock 2027. 20, it's just insane. I mean, this thing is heavy compared to Wilson Combat, but it, this is. It's a tag driver. It, it shoots down the range. Um, it's comfortable. 
other than that, I mean, um, you know, that's it. It's just quick put together, quick to take apart, um, practical, um, in terms of concealed carry, I don't think I've really tried concealed because I always run with the light. It's the only holster that I have for it. I mean, I actually have a, uh, safari land also, but, um, I'm more of a, a light person, so this is maybe a daytime concealed carry without the light. Um, you, you just have to wear not only the right clothing, you have to have the right body shape for it, and, you know, just have the correct posture. You're not, if you find yourself constantly bending down to get the, that drink that you always like at the bottom at the fuel stop, do not carry this. But, um, I've carried this with the 2XL t-shirt and I have my hand, my pants pulled up a little high about belly button level and you know it's not so bad but still I had to run it sort of like on the left front inside it wasn't on the hip it was closer to my midsection and it's totally doable but um, you know you probably need like a flatter stomach and bigger shoulders if you have kind of like a uh, bigger belly and you're trying to run this concealed good luck um, unless it's inside the waistband but in any event it's a good gun uh, still runs 1100 R's um, in terms of it being for your first 45 I do not recommend it I just recommend sticking to a Remington 1911 or even a higher price Springfield um, you know if you're just trying to get a feel for whether or not you want to carry this much metal around, uh, just learning the action. And just the general firing rate of a 1911 or a 45. I mean, it's not a Smith & Wesson MP45, so um, you have to be a little bit more deliberate. It's not a para, it's not a double stack. And single stack mag. And I just actually pinched my pinky right there, loading that in there. So, I mean, that's, it's, you know, you have to be, you have to have a, a, I guess a little bit more, you have to have some awareness just in terms of handling and just realize that it's a big piece of metal and kind of like back in the day, machinery could get hurt by it. It's, it's an intentful uh, tool, so just consider it, but um, if you're looking to have something for like in your vehicle, yes, I, I recommend having this in your vehicle. It's a great tool, but in terms of first fire, first night, first 45, um, or first 1911, um, you know, again, um, I don't know. Again, this is, this is probably like my fifth handgun, I think, and I, this was actually fourth one that I purchased. And this is the second 1911, so um, it's sort of an aficionado. Uh, maybe check out 1911. You're not going to get the greatest recommendation because people go on there and they're like, "Well, I just bought my Wilson Combat." It's like, yeah, you spent five grand on a on a on a 1911, and you want to talk about it in a forum? It's like, really? Come on, I'm calling bullshit. But in any event, um, cleaning. You know, you can kind of wipe your mags down, remove any fingerprints. I'm just kidding, but um, um, that's about it. I mean, the only thing that I think that this thing would really benefit is probably changing out with some some more showy grips like ivory. I don't know. I mean, this it's pretty good just right out of the box. Um, comes with one mag. Most people, you know, want the most bang for their buck. So, you know, again, this isn't, this isn't an entry level firearm. This isn't meant for somebody who just, they just learned about handguns or firearms or they, you know, they saw a 1911, now they want one. It's uh, $1,200 just for the gun, just for the firearm, for the pistol. Um, I believe this lanyard ran me another 30 bucks. This holster was, Ooh, about 85 I think this light was another 200 
filter was another 30. Wilson mags, 30 bucks a piece. And I've got about another 10 or 15 spare mags that are just range mags. Um, so you're easily looking at about $1,500 just for, for what I consider an entry level package and something that, you know, I've taken out to the range once. So, I mean, it's not something you're going to take out and just show off and sling around. It's not a four or $500 clock. This is, um, again, a mid entry level 45 for someone who, you know, had a 45 in the past and appreciate, you know, the history behind it. So, um, I think that's about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Just give you some food for thought. Um, I'll do another video pretty soon. I'm not really sure if I'm gonna do another handgun or if I'm gonna break out one of the auto loaders or we'll figure it out. But in any event, um, thanks for watching.